Welcome to today's lesson on, you guessed it, the supply curve. Uh, yesterday we looked at the demand curve and we saw that really every demand curve is this downward sloping line and it made sense to us. You know, if we had a high price, then the quantity of goods demanded is really not going to be very high. If, if we have a really low price for a good or a service, uh, the quantity demanded is going to be a lot higher. Well, today we're going to look at the supply curve, and we're going to do it in much the same way that we did the demand curve, and we're going to create our own supply curve. So the first thing you need to do, of course, is to log on to Moodle. And then what I'd like you to do is to take oops, this supply curve survey. Um, you're going to do this as a class, then you're going to kind of follow along and create the graph. I actually already have one created from last year, and so I'm going to jump over there. Uh, this is the survey results that we got from last year. So like we did yesterday, um, after you guys have taken the survey, you're going to download this supply curve data. That would be this supply curve uh, cleaning first hour, that link underneath the survey. So take the survey, then you're going to uh, go to the supply curve cleaning first hour which will bring you to the spreadsheet and we're going to download it so download it as an excel spreadsheet and then we need to start creating the curve now yesterday we were able to just total up each of these columns um, because there was a number in there we had, were looking at the demand for Mountain Dew and um, or the demand for donuts as well and we we just had numbers in there well we can't just add those up right now because it's yeses and noes and Excel can't add yeses and noes but there is a function that will count how many yeses there are and not surprisingly it's a count if function it's going to count if and you can see what it says there it says count if the number of cells within a range meet a given uh, condition so the first thing we're going to do is of course with every function we type equals and then we type in the function that we want to use so equals count if then parentheses and the first thing it asks for is the range so which cells are we looking in and so that's from B2 to B26 then we put a comma and it's gonna ask for the criteria and we're looking for if it says the word yes and we have to put the word yes in quotation marks so it'll count how many times it sees the word yes. Close my parenthesis, I hit enter, and lo and behold, it's two times. I'll run through that one more time, and you may want to pause it after I've done this uh, to do it on your own. So we're going to do equals count if, that's the function we want, so equals count if parenthesis the range, so we select the cells we want, B2 to B26, and then we put a comma in, and that comma is extremely important, because that will tell Excel, okay, that was our range, now we're going to look for this criteria, and we're looking to see if it says yes, and we put yes into quotation marks. Close the parentheses, hit enter, and then like we did before, if we grab the bottom right hand corner of that cell, we can drag it over and we will have our number of yeses for each of those different uh, different dollar amounts. Now we just need to graph it. Um, yesterday I, I showed you, you know, we can select our data and then we can select uh, two different rows by holding down control. Um, it's actually going to be a little easier for us uh, and this would have been the shortcut yesterday that I didn't show you. I'm going to actually copy these dollar amounts so control C, control V and paste them down below. And the reason I want to do that is because uh, two things. One, it makes it easy for me to select the, the data that I want to use in my graph. So I've got my, my prices here in row 28 and my quantities in row 27 and they're together so it's really easy to select them. Um, but the other reason, advantage it gives me is um, remember Excel always puts whatever in the top row into the uh, as the x uh, on the x-axis on the horizontal axis and we really want our quantities on that horizontal axis and our prices on the y-axis so now we go we selected our data 
we go insert scatter plot uh, we're going to do one with lines again um, because we had a little glitch in the data we get this kind of uh, it kind of jumps out here it juts out um, that's okay it doesn't I don't know what yours will look like exactly but it gets the basic idea that the uh, supply curve is going to be upward sloping so the last thing we need to do is we need to uh, make some changes to the layout of our graph we need a chart title so I'm going to put in a chart title actually I want to do the above the chart title and we will call this I'm just going to call it supply curve probably come up with a more creative title we need our axis titles we need our horizontal one which is always quantity x-axis is always quantity and we put in our primary vertical one which is price so that's how you create your supply curve I would say pause it here for a moment make sure that you have that uh, figured out and once you do have that figured out then you can move on to the next step which will be as a class you need to take the lawn mowing survey first hour so that you can do your homework which is going to be creating a supply curve on your own um, you may work with a partner or somebody in the class if you need to but you first need to take this lawn mowing survey it'll look just like that cleaning survey that you took earlier and then you need to go to the lawn uh, supply curve lawn mowing that homework assignment you will click on your results and then you will create that graph and then you will upload that spreadsheet you'll save it and upload it here when you are finished thank you and I hope you guys have a lot of success today